So, you have a crappy paint job just like the one on our Torino that's all crazed out and looks pretty bad. It's as flat as if you had sprayed it with flat clear and you want it to shine a little bit. You want to make it look a little bit better. And the way I'm going to show you today is how I do this stuff. Now, granted, there are other ways to do it, and we're going to talk about those right after the break. Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let Auto Crafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, so I have a crappy paint job here. Now, what I'm going to tell you first is to do yourself a favor and go out and check out videos like the guys at Paint Education make. Paint Education has a great series on everything from how to paint your car, how to buff this thing out, how to make it a Mac Daddy shine. Kevin over there is really, really good at this kind of stuff. He is probably one of the best people I've ever met that knows how to make a paint job really pop. I've seen a few of his cars done, and the guy is just absolutely exceptional at that job. Go check out Paint Education. I'm not making a dime off of me talking about his stuff. I got a link to him down below me here. Um, he's a great dude. Check his videos out. He's actually funny, too. I don't know if he's funny on the paint education videos, but he is a funny guy. So, anyway, onward and forward. What I'm going to talk about first is what you're going to need in order to do this if you're going to do it on the slapdash method like I do it. I'm going to tell you right now, I am not Kevin, and I am not about to paint educate you here. What I'm showing you is a goofball like me can take some water, some rubbing compound, and some sandpaper and make a crap job, paint job like this. And it's mostly crappy because of age and probably a little too much paint on the car. Look decent. It's not gonna be a number one, oh my gosh, you're gonna win every show you go to paint job, but it will pass very well to go to a cruise in. So that's what we're gonna go over today. What I'm gonna talk about now is the paper. Number one, over here, what I always start out with is usually a 600, but I found on this particular car, when I went to the 600, it wasn't cutting enough of the scratches that you see in the finish. The other side that I'm showing you a little bit of video of right now, that side I went on in with 600, and I did it three or four different times, and it never quite cut enough. Then I moved back to a 400 wet sand paper. I like wet sand. It's a little bit messy, but then again, so is the dry with all the particulate in the air. It's going to be bad for you with that floating around. You'll want to wear a mask when you're cutting the paint off with 400 or 600 because you're just going to have a lot of dust. So what I'm doing today on this one, because the paint is particularly bad, I'm going to first hit it with some 400, but before I do that, I'm going to clean it. Now, I'm just going to use a paper towel on this car because, as you can see, it ain't much. I have this filled with some Dawn and Water Solution. And I'm just going to go on here and check this out and see what we get when we clean it down. Don't wear clothes you care about when you're doing this kind of stuff. I'm going to tell you that right now. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to wipe this down. You may not even know what kind of finish this car has on it, like if it's a clear coat, base clear finish, or just a regular single stage. Dawn will cut grease off this panel in short order. Now, you can see by the cloth here, as it's turning green, that this is indeed a single stage paint job. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my 400, after I clean that panel down, I'm gonna fold it up. Normally on a super nice car, one that's got really good body work, I don't hand sand, I will go in and actually use a block underneath this to sand it out. I am not worried about that on this one. Please, by all means, go grab a block and sand it out. I did the other side without doing that, and it turned out okay. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to throw down a little bit of water. On the panel. So please, by all means, if this is wrong in your book, write in. Let me know how much it sucks. I'm not applying a ton of pressure to this. I'm not bearing down on it. I'm letting the paper glide. Mostly my fingers are only there to hold the paper in place. I'm also watching where I'm sanding so that I can know if I've gone a bit too far.
I've got tape on here as well. The tape is there for me to uh, keep that white stripe white because you can have problems with cutting it when you're cutting down on this green or whatever color you'll be working on. And I'm eyeballing this finish with the 400 to make sure I'm not cutting through. Too deep. I want to cut, but I don't want to cut all the way through the finish. I'll go ahead and pop this in for a second. This is a little sanding block I got a while back. I don't even know where to get them anymore. This thing's like 20 some odd years old. It can be a little awkward for sanding. And I'm watching that top edge as much as anything. All of your UV problems are going to be a lot up here on these panels that are high. Does it feel counterproductive to be using 400 grit? Yes. I'll tell you a little story though. While I'm doing this, because this is going to take me a minute, I fell in love with these cars right after I bought one in 1980 while I was still in high school. Back then, this car was, these cars weren't that old, but I got a 1973 Grand Torino Sport, medium blue with a white top. Beautiful car. Um, and we drove it from South Carolina back to Texas. Learned pretty quick that the gas mileage on that car was pretty crap. I don't know that anybody ever cut and buffed this car when they first did it. All right, I'm going to uh, go grab myself a cloth and we're going to talk for a second. Ew. This is what happens whenever you're working with this kind of stuff. If it's a single stage, you're going to turn whatever color the car is. If it's blue, you're going to be a Smurf. All right, so now I'm going to take my water wet the panel and clean this off so I can take a look at what I've got. See if I have any effect on the crazing in that finish. The thing about 400 is it's going to cut quick. The thing about 400 is it's going to cut quick. You have to be real careful and real visual on what you're doing. Most of the time when people are painting cars, these areas up here may be a little lighter than they are down here. Your fog level may be less at the top. And this one, it looks like on this side, he didn't fog it quite as heavily at the top as he did on the other side. I'm starting to see, and it's going to be very difficult for you to see this, I'm starting to see places where the material in the finish is coming up. It's much lighter up here than it is down here, which tells me I'm getting pretty darn close to my stopping point with my paint. Now, what you can do is you can let it dry out and look at it, and you'll see shiny spots in the finish where you haven't gone down as deep as it goes, so to speak. I may start working 600 at this point, Again, I am not looking for a super duper high-end finish here. I'm looking for a really pretty driver. Anyway, my Torino was awesome. It was a 351 Cleveland, four barrel, C6 automatic. At that point when I got it, it didn't pass anything but a gas station, but it was a beautiful car with the medium blue paint and the white top and a medium blue interior with the Come Here Darling bench seat in it. I loved that car. That car was the only car I've ever owned where I honestly felt like the car and I were one. I do miss it.
and it got totaled out in an accident that uh, I got rear-ended by a semi-truck. Totally different story. I think after watching this dry out a little bit, I might give it one more go lower below this line here in this area with some 400. I'm going to take it off of here and break it in half. On some of this 400 paper, you can actually do that. Once you bend it, you can crack it, so to speak, and make it fold to your will. Ish. Again, not applying a ton of pressure, letting the paper do the work. Always watching to see if I'm getting real close to going thin on this. My recommendation is if you do this, do it where you can get a good light with it too. Like when you're working on it, I'm under very bright fluorescent lights here actually very bright LED lights here. The fluorescence and LED, uh, they are the ones that catch all the sins on a classic car paint job. You want to look at a classic car paint job and know what you're getting yourself into? Put it under fluorescent or LED lights that are very bright. The reason I put tape on here, like I said, is to protect that stripe. And if you'll look at it, you'll notice that there's places where the tape is up onto the green. I did that on purpose. I want to keep that up away from here because when you're cutting this stuff with the, the sandpaper and then when you start buffing it, you can end up with a uh, place where it pulls the tape down and you still get a mar in your finish on the white. And then you have to try to repair that. And believe me, white is like, there's so many different colors of white, it's not even funny. Let that dry up. Take a look at it. So I've always had a weak spot for those Torinos, any of these kind of Torinos. This one a little less, but I think what kind of sold me on this car, other than all the parts that are available, is the fact that it's a Starsky and Hutch stripe. I was never a big fan of the show on TV, and I was even less of a fan of the movie. The movie was just okay. I'm sorry, if you really liked the movie, that's your fault, not mine. Anyway, so it kind of is one of the reasons that I got inspired to buy this particular Torino. The Starsky and Hutch Stripe, the 351 Windsor. I mean, if it was a little 302 car, I probably would have left it alone. But it wasn't, and I didn't. All right, I'm going to move on up to my 600. I think I could probably stay in the neighborhood of the 400 for a while, but I don't want to bore you guys to death with me sitting here for hours and hours doing this because this isn't something that is a five minute job. It's something that's gonna take you some time to do. I'm just going through this quickly so that you can get an idea of what I'm talking about and see a finished product. 600, wetting it and cutting it. Probably not gonna do as many cuts. I'm just gonna try to do a real quick over the top to knock back that 400 where it's put scratches in the finish. And I'm gonna go down here where I saw that it was a little light on the 400 and sand that corner in a little bit. What you're trying to do is to just get it so that whenever you go in and you use your buffer to buff the paint out, it's not got as, so to speak, as far to go. You're also listening for things. If it sounds like something is if you don't have that sizzle and you've got a squeak in it, you've got sand in there and that's scratching the paint even more. You need to make sure you get that kind of stuff out or you're just going to have to be doing more and more buffing. Pretty soon there won't be any paint on the car. And I'm going to put it on the paddle and then flat sand it. Probably should have done that already, but I got carried away. The reason I don't continually use the flat panel on a car like this is this car's paint job, well, the paint job's not bad, I guess, but the finish on it, it's got some holidays in the bodywork, for lack of a better way to put it, where somebody didn't really take the time to cut it and buff it. See where I'm having a, already having a problem with the tape wanting to pop away when I'm sanding. Let's face it, if you're going to learn on a car how to do this kind of stuff, 
this kind of car is it. All right, right there, I've got a spot where it's getting pretty thin. I'm gonna have to hold off a little bit there. And I can't go much further. I'll have to hit that with a thousand. I think this is pretty good though for now. If I were trying to get a million dollar paint job out of it, I'd be okay. I'd be worried about it, but I'm just trying to get it decent. And right now, I'm about as far down as I want to go. I'll do the 1,000 and the 2,500 on a light sand just to get rid of the 600 sand scratches. If you've got a Torino story, let me know. Put something in the comments below. Um, I love them. A lot of people necessarily don't. Well, there's now more than ever, there's a lot of love for these bigger body Torinos like this one. But if you had a Torino or you have had one and, or wanted one, let me know. Talk to me about it in the comments. Um, I'm curious about y'all's stories as well. I think the stories are what make these cars. You know, there's a lot of stories for me behind the Torino nameplate. Ah, bottle keeps falling over. And I want to know what your stories are, so leave me some comments in the section below. I'm trying to do better about answering those. It's just in life right now, it's just been real busy for us on a personal level. So if you leave a comment and I haven't responded to you, I do apologize. It's not personal. It's just the way life is for me right now. Nothing bad, just a lot of busy. This thousand is going to be a little more sticky, so I'm going to throw it on my pad here to sand with. And I am not going to do a ton of stuff with the thousand. You always want to watch your edges down here too. Sometimes the paint on these corners can get light or the panel may be popped on that corner and it'll cause you a problem. About all I want to do there. And I am going to have to reapply my tape because it's picking. And when I go in to start buffing it with the buffing wheel, it's going to be a problem if I'm not careful. All right, one last go with 2,500. And it's going to make a mess. You're going to have pants that are going to be dirty and stuff. When you go to wash your pants, sometimes the color won't come out of them. Um, I have been admonished for this fact, so I wore a pair of older blue jeans today. Last call, 2500 That squeaking is my finger on the bottom of the pad here. But I'm not worried about that. And what you'll find is, is this will look great. You'll go ahead and step back and go, you know what? That looks awesome. I'm going to go ahead and buff it. And you may have to do that two or three times. With this car, with on this side in particular, I don't think I'm going to take that chance. What I get, I get because it's getting pretty thin over here. Just keep knocking things over. Because it's a single stage paint, I'm not gonna worry about too much cleaning. I'm gonna pull my old tape up here. Take a second. Bad thing about some of this tape is if when it gets wet, it'll tend to uh, not want to remove itself as, as well. So you'll have to get after it with a some kind of cleaner. Like I'll probably use a pre-cleaner on this, especially on the white stripe, to uh, get the old paint off. For the buffing side of things, it's not a problem because it's it's a wet buff, but it's also a dry buff as well. That's it. That's how you go out and color sand the fender in a car. At least that's how I do it. I'm sure that there are lots of people out there that are gonna write in and tell me how much what I did was wrong and how much it sucks. But 
it looks good from here and it'll look even better from your house. It's up. Be, be mindful of that. Um, there are a ton of different ways to do it. Like I said at the front of the video, paint education is a great way to learn how to do this sort of thing. Uh, better than watching me do it, but this is just to give you the courage to go out and try it. I mean, if you've got a paint job that looks like an alligator's back like this thing does, what have you really got to lose? You know what I'm saying? You're not going to lose anything by going in and doing a color cut and buff on it because the paint's already trashed. It's a great place to learn and figure out what's going to work for you and what works best for you. So, there you go. You folks, do me a favor. Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice, and come back next week where we show you how we're gonna use one of these. And we'll see you on down the road. Super cheap, very effective.